on our Way to Be at Home series community chat. My name is Carrie Pannoni, and I work for Maryland Business Roundtable for Education, MBRT for short. And I'm so excited to have our guest today, um, a co-worker at Fort Hill High School, and uh, her name is Mrs. Abby Twig. She's the school counselor there, and we're going to talk about testing today. So welcome, Abby. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Carrie. Welcome, or thank you for having me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about testing. Great. Well, why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about yourself, your background, your education, how long you've been a, a counselor? Sure. So I have been a school counselor for a total of 13 years. I received my master's of school counseling from Frostburg State University. I spent my first six years in Hagerstown, Maryland, split between two elementary schools. Uh, Old Forge Elementary and Hickory Elementary. And then the mm -hmm. past seven years, I have been at Fort Hill High School at the high school level in Cumberland. Great. Um, I've known Abby for quite a few years because you helped my youngest, Isabella, with um, going to college when she graduated. Yes. So thank you. <laughs> Um, just some other things I wanted to add. I do. Uh, I am married. I have a husband named Corey. I have two sons, Wyatt and Weston. But the one thing I wanted to add uh, is I also have a big family at Fort Hill with about 700 students and 18, 80 faculty members. And I know you are and I am as well. We're really, really missing them. So I just want to give a little yeah. shout out and say hi, Fort Hill. And we hey. both miss you a whole bunch. Yes, yes. I'm miss missing my next gen scholars and mm -hmm. um, all the staff. It's it's really hard to to be at home. And I'm sure some of the kids are struggling with that as well. So um, yeah, it's been tough. And I think, you know, just like you, I look at them as my family. So it's been tough absolutely. not seeing them and being able to talk to them. And um, so I just wanted to make sure they knew that we were both thinking of them. Absolutely. And they can reach out to us for help anytime um, through through email, through calling the school, uh, yes. through also their not Naviance.com accounts. They can also mm -hmm. reach out to us. So yeah. just wanted to put out those reminders. So but let's get started. We can okay. um, start talking about the testing. Lots of things have changed um, in the last month or two. And specifically, we'll start with AP testing. It's just okay. around the corner. So what can you tell us about that? Sure. The, the AP exam uh, testing has changed drastically. If you're a student, you know, that took one last year, it's going to look much different this year. Uh, we are approaching exam season. Uh, the exams will start May 11th, and they will run until May 22nd. There is a chance that you may have more than one exam each day. Um, for our students in Eastern Standard Time, the test times will be 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. Um, and if you're not sure when your exam will be, you can go ahead and access that schedule on the College Board website. So the schedule again yeah. is May 11th to the 22nd. Great, great. Um, I know there are a couple um, different uh, regulations as far as uh, and guidelines. And I know we're going to post in our comments section uh, the links to all this information. So uh, to collegeboard.org. And um, but can you tell us any more about any kind of regulations or what the test is going to look like this sure. year? I wanted to talk a little bit about the format of the test just because it is so different from years past. Um, basically, it will be a 45 minute test. And depending mm -hmm. on the subject, you may have one or two free response questions that you need to answer. Um, the, there is a little bit of a difference with world language and music um, and also computer science and art. Those subjects, uh, you may need to either download an app or also you may need to submit a portfolio. So, but for most subjects, it will include a one to two question free response um, essay that you will have 45 minutes to answer either one or both questions. Great. I noticed on their website some information about 
if students have issues with internet connections, um, their Wi-Fi, or anything like that, that what can they do about that? And um, okay. what can you tell us about that? Yeah, let's talk about that, that. One more thing about the format. I just wanted to make sure students oh, sure. knew. That's okay. Just to make sure that students knew that you will only be tested on material that you have covered up until schools let out in early March. Um, please don't worry about anything that you may have not covered in the initial curriculum because they will not be testing you on that. Just what you have learned up until early March. As That's a great point. As, yeah. As far as technology uh, Carrie has a good point. Um, you can use three different modes of technology. You can use your computer or laptop. You can use a tablet or you can use a phone to access the free response questions. And it is important that you make sure that you can access those before you get to exam day uh, so that you're not in a pickle um, when it comes time to start. A lot of the school districts, I'm not sure across the across the nation exactly how each district is doing it, but I know ours is helping students access Chromebooks or um, other means of technology if they do not have it at their household. So that's been really helpful because we do know that not all students have access to technology. Right. And I'm I'm sure it would be tricky to to type on a on a uh, phone <laughs> to do a free yeah. response. Yeah, I mean, it is something that they can use. Uh, you know, teenagers now are really good on their phones, but if you have a laptop, a laptop or a tablet, it might be a little bit easier for you to type those those answers in. And sure. um, you know, you might want to check out the new uh, standards or information that was put out this week, but basically uh, two days before your exam starts, you will receive what they're calling an e-ticket in your email. And if you do not receive it in your email, you can go to the College Board website and access it through your, it's called My AP account, and you can receive your e-ticket there. Each exam is going to have an e-ticket specific to you. No one else will have the, the exact same e-ticket. And it's basically to ID you or log you into those essay questions. And so you, it is important that you're checking for that e-ticket in your e email or the My AP account so that you can access your um, AP or your exam questions. The other thing I wanted to add with technology is the way that you're going to be submitting your answers. They have announced that there are three ways that you can do that. The first way is you can type into a, another document. You can use Google Docs, you can use Microsoft Word, you can use Notes, whatever you like to use. You can type that in on your computer. You want to make sure you have your AP ID at the top as well as your initials on every single page. Don't forget to do that every single page. And you need to, uh, you can type, make sure you're saving every so often, and then you're going to copy it and then paste it into the uh, space provided. If you don't want to do that, you could use the same programs I just mentioned, Google Docs, Microsoft Word, Notes, and you can save and attach it to the space provided. Maybe you're a student that doesn't like to type. Maybe you do better handwriting. I was really excited to see this option because this is what we do in our county in years past is you are able to handwrite it. The difference Great. there is you want to make sure you're using a pencil or a blue or black pen. And then also you need to write, like I said, your APID and your initials at every uh, page, top of the page, the question number you're answering. And then you will take a photo with your phone uh, of what you've written and then you will add that to your space provided. Now, if your essay is more than a page long, you need to take a photo of each page. Make sure you're doing it vertically, not horizontally. Um, they will not accept that. So make sure you're taking your picture this way and not this way. Um, and so you can load that to the space provided. Um, you can do up to five pictures for that option. So again, three options, copy and paste, save and attach or handwriting. And those are all things you want to be thinking about before May 11th. Which option are you going to use? And you have all the materials to be able to do that. Great. That's great information. And I know um, 
that I also read something about making sure that, um, you know, it is you doing the work. They're going to double check this by doing what? So it, what is, information? Yes. it is open note and open book. But remember, you only have 45 minutes to complete your question. So it is nice that they're offering that this year, but they're also going to be adding security measures in place to make sure you're not plagiarizing. Each one of your AP teachers will receive a copy of your essay question answers, and they will be reviewing those here at the end of May to make sure that that is in fact your work and that you haven't plagiarized as well as College Board has put some, you know, measures in place to make sure that they're that isn't going to happen, that it is your work solely. Right. That's exactly what I wanted you to share. I remember hearing about that and, you know, um, just want to make sure kids are aware that, you know, there are guidelines and, and we don't want, you know, any test to be thrown out. Um, we want them to be able to succeed in this in this. Um, and so we definitely want to share what information we have and, and point them to the right resources so that they can be successful. Right. And the, right. And the plan is they still want to get the scores out in uh, July. So that's oh, exciting. Great. Um, that has not changed. So that you should still be able to access your scores in July. And um, it sounds like the, the changes that they have made are, you know, for the best of the, making the best of the situation that we're in with, you know, the quarantine. That's right. Kind of making lemonade out of lemons. That's right. <laughs> and just a couple more things I wanted to add before we move on to the other test. Starting, oh, sure. May 4, starting May 4th, the students can log on and do a demo. And so basically you can go in and practice submitting your answers. And I really encourage you to do that because you don't want to wait until the last minute to do that and something go wrong. So I would start going on May 4th is for most exams. May 11th is for the exams that require the app, the world language and the music. And you mm -hmm. are able to go in and actually practice those three ways I was just talking about, about uploading your answers to, to College Board. So please do that. That's very important. Also, you can still continue to visit the AP Live review sessions. Uh, those oh, are provided by AB teachers across the world, and they're live, and every day there's a set schedule. So, um, you know, each time of the day, there might be a different subject that they're teaching and reviewing. Great, great information um, on AP testing. And like I said, we're mentioning links in the comments. If you have any questions, put those in the comments. We really want to help out our students and families uh, during this time and um, eliminate any questions they may have. And also, um, we want to talk about some other tests today, the SAT and the AC ACT. Yes, and as most of you know, the SAT and ACT are college and entrance exams. So basically, these are exams that you would need to take to be considered for admission into a four-year university or college. And because of the pandemic and the quarantine, they have made some changes as well. SAT is done by College Board, which is exactly the same company that does uh, AP testing. And so what? let's start with SAT. SAT there are no more testing uh, up until summer. They have canceled all testing sessions due to many districts being closed and just due to trying to be staying at home and staying safe. What they have added is there will be a test every month up until December of next year. So they've added a test in September to allow for more students to take the test. I also read that they are going to try maybe in some districts to add extra testing sites with um, extra testing proctors so that more students can access that test. Um, priority is, be given, is going to be given to the class of 2021. And okay. any student that was supposed to take the test in June, you will be able to have early access to register for those, uh, those tests in the fall. Um, if, Great. In, I also read that in the event, if we do not have uh, SATs next fall, we are still quarantined uh, to our homes, that we may, they may go to a online SAT testing option, just like they're doing with the AP 
test. They haven't decided on that yet, but it looks like it's something they're looking into, which is nice to know that it would still be an option. Right. Great. And I'm sure a lot of kids, um, their concerns on their mind, because depending on the college that they're interested in going into, perhaps they require SAT scores. And mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm sure this is this is a, a concern. And and mm -hmm. um, I just read an article about um, colleges that go test optional. So can you share any thoughts on that? Sure. Test optional basically means that the college is going to consider the exam scores if you have them. Uh, when, when me and Carrie were in college, it was based on grades and test scores, but now college admission centers are looking more at a, a well-rounded student. So not only are they looking at grades and test scores, they're also looking at everything that a student is involved in. You know, including leadership positions and community service, extracurricular activities. They're looking at your character, looking at essays, also the letters of recommendations from your teachers and your counselors and your coaches and any other important people in your life. So it is something that they're, you know, looking at many avenues of your life to consider admission. So yes, some are considering going test optional, that if you don't have a test score, it won't hurt you. Um, necessarily for admission. Great information. That's not all just about the test. Um, students can um, utilize their other other uh, attributes to be able to highlight for college yeah. admission process. So um, I'm excited to to hear that. And and as far as um, test optional, I'm sure they can find those resources, whether their school or college that they're interested in is test optional through the college board uh, website. So um, yes, or, definitely or the check that out. Or the or individual the, college, yeah. Absolutely, I was just gonna say that, yep. And uh, so definitely don't worry. And even though a lot of schools are going test optional, and that might change the way things look as far as the admissions process. But um, like Abby said, you know, it's not all about testing, you know. Um, so basically work on that resume. <laughs> so um, as far as the ACT goes, I uh, haven't seen too much on that. They are still, they still have a June test scheduled. Uh, they okay. did cancel their April test. And so you can go on free of charge and change your test date to June if you were signed up for the April test. I'm not sure if they will continue with the June administration. Uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But all you need to do is go to actstudent.org and you can see the updates there for the ACT. Great, great. Are there any other um, reminders or um, perhaps I don't see any questions um, in the in the comments. So um, I'll open it up to any other uh, reminders that you'd like to share. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily reminders, but I do want our students to know that we care about you and we miss you a whole bunch. And we are here to help you. And so please communicate with us either through email or calling the school and they can get a hold of us. Um, some teachers are using Google Meet to meet with their students. So just stay in contact with us so that we can relay information to you and you can ask us questions. And if we don't know the answers, we will get them to you as soon as possible. But please just stay uh, positive, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, you know, listen to what everybody is saying so that we can get back to some normalcy, uh, whatever that may be in the near future, and that we can, you know, get back to school and be together again. Well, thank you so much, Abby. We really appreciate all your information on testing. Um, I know it's going to go a long way to help out our students and families. And like I said before, um, it, there are links in the comments to the websites that she referenced, and you can find out more information there. So again, thank you. I miss you. seeing you and all of our students and staff at Fort Hill High School. And you know, this information is 
is, is not only for students in Allegheny County, but all across the state of Maryland. Maryland Business Roundtable for Education has programs in every county, and we look to drive student success across the state of Maryland. So we're excited to bring you these Way to Be at Home series, and I want to invite you to join us tomorrow. Um, the Dream Team at MBRT is going to feature um, you know, why we selected the college that we did and uh, for tomorrow, because it's college decision day tomorrow. So tune in at 11 o'clock tomorrow and join us. And again, thank you from everyone here at MBRT for joining us. Thank you, Abby and everyone, please um, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. Bye.